Right, now let's see how to nest the loops. We can nest loops. We can nest any type of loop within another or itself. You will need to use a loop inside another one so many times in your row. This is very useful, but generally costly thing. So you need to be careful about that. If you don't really need it, do not use, because it increases the cost. But anyway, you generally need to use that. We can use labels for loops. As we have seen in blocks, we can use labels for the loops. We write our label before the loop keyword in basic loops. And for while and for loops, we write before while and for keywords. Besides, we can write the name of labels at the end of end loop statement to increase clarity. If you use an exit keyword inside an inner loop, it will not finish the outer loop. It will finish only the corresponding loop. But we can use labels to exit the outer loop. If we label outer loop, we can use exit command with the label and finish both inner and the outer loop at the same time. This is really good. Now, let's see how to use it in an example. Let's write our set server output on first. Let's execute and delete that. By the way, I don't want to write that again and again. Actually, there is one more way to in SQL Develop. We just click on View and DBMS Output. Then in the window appear below, we click on the plus sign and select the HR and OK. This way is also a really efficient way, but you need to do the clicking on plus sign and OK in every session. It's a little faster way than writing the set server output on command, but the cons of this is, as you can see, DBMS output window also takes some extra space on the screen. So I don't like to see this, because we generally do not print so much things on the screen in PLC Equal Developing. So I'm used to write set server output on, but you can drag this window to somewhere you wish. For example, the left bottom place, I think. But I won't do that. I will run the set server output on before I create my lesson. I will run the set server output on before I create my lesson. So that this will not take any more time. So if you see that my code puts the output without writing the set server output on command, that means I ran that before. Very good. Let's continue writing our code now. Write tick layer. Now, I will declare an inner variable. I will use that later. So, we inner number is equal to 1. And begin. I said that we can use any type of loops for nesting a loop or for labeling. So, let's start with for loop, for example. For we outer in one dot dot five and loop. Now let's print our v outer variable to see the outer value in each iteration of the outer loop, which is our for loop in here. So dbms output dot put line. Let's write my outer value is. Our v outer variable. Now let's assign a value of one to our inner variable. Why to do that? Because I want this variable to start from one in each iteration. So v inner is equal to one. Now let's write a basic loop inside of our for loop. When we do that, that means we nested these two loops. So let's create our loop then. In here, I need to increase my variable value to avoid an infinite loop. I want my variable to increase by one in each iteration of my inner loop. So I write we inner 
let me correct here too is equal to v inner plus one now let's print our inner variable values with some spaces to distinguish from the other variable so let's copy that and paste in here and my inner value is v inner and put some spaces since we created a basic blue we need to write our exit when command for example in here i want to exit when the multiplication of inner and outer value reaches 15 for example so let's write exit when v inner times v outer greater or equal to 50. now let's end our inner and outer loops and let's end our block great we are ready to launch before running let me explain what we did in here the aim of our code is creating a nest blue we know that we can use the same type or different types of loops nestedly so we used for loop first we called this as the outer loop then we wrote another loop inside of our for loop we called that loop as inner loop we specified that when the multiplication of these two values reaches 15 exit the inner loop the outer loop is certain it finishes when it iterates five times now let's run our code and see what happens let me correct put lines and clear up here and run again as we can see our outputs are shown in both dbms output and our script output so let me close this dbms output window perfect we have two different outputs now the indented output are from the inner loop and the others are from the outer loop so let's go to the top and trace our outputs our other values started from one and printed then the code continued and entered into the inner loop let me show that our inner loop started from two and iterated 14 times because we said that exit when v inner times v outer is equal or greater than 50. since v outer is one it iterated until v inner reached to 50. then the multiplication reached to 15 and exited the inner loop but the outer loop still continues as we can see inner value is 50. then the outer value increased to 2 automatically because this is for loop and for loop increases the counter variable in each iteration by 1. this time our inner loop iterated for 8 times because our multiplication passed the value of 15 now even if nothing changed in the code it iterated 14 in the first time and 8 in the second if we scroll down we can see that the inner loop iterated less than one before then the total iteration finished when the outer loop variable reached to five now we iterated in nested loops and said that if the multiplication reached 15 exit the inner loop can we do that for the outer loop i mean can we finish the outer loop inside of the inner loop yes with using labels let's remember the labels in the blocks we had some labels to specify an alias for that block with that way we could reach to the value of the outer blocks in for loops the logic is the same but the opposite what i mean is the idea of labeling is reaching to somewhere that we cannot reach normally but in loops we reach to the outer loop the usage is the same two less than signs then our alias then are greater than signs but in here if we are using basic loops we write our alias just before our loop keyword if we use while loops 
it is written just before the while keyword. If it is for loops, we use it before the for keyword, not before the loop keywords. Be careful on that. One thing to add, if you write the names of the labels just after the end loop keywords, it will increase readability. Now, let's go to our example and do our labelings. Before changing our loop, let's pin our result to compare with the new one later. Now, now let's add our label for the outer loop in here. Since this is a for loop, I will add the label just before the for keyword. Outer loop. Our inner loop labeled into here. This is a basic loop, so I write the label just before the loop keyword. Now, I want to reach the outer loop and say that if our multiplication reaches to 16, exit the whole loop, both the inner loop and the outer loop. Now, I will use the outer loop's label in here. I write label just after the exit keyword. So, exit outer loop when let me copy that is greater than 60 I wrote my exit for the outer in here because if I put it after the exit below it would be an unreachable code now I will add the labels just after the end loop keywords so that we can understand easier that which loops end it is. So this is the outer loop and this is the inner loop. What we did in here is we labeled our loops and then reached to the outer loop with using its label and exited the whole loops from the inner loop. Normally, if we write an exit keyword inside of the inner loop, only the inner loop exists. But if we use labels with exit keywords, we can reach to the outer loops too. Perfect. Now let's run our query and see the difference. Now let's expand our script output and check the outputs. Let's scroll up. Okay, first our other variable is 1. It entered to the inner loop and iterated until 50. If you look at the exit keyword in our code, we have two exits. The first one serves for the 16 and the next one serves for the number 50. If the first one matches, the next one will not be checked because the cursor will directly go to the end of the end loop keyword of the other loop. If you look at the variable values, the other is 1. The in loop until the value is 50. When the value is 15, the multiplication is 15 now. So it passed the other loop exit and matched with the second exit command. So the inner loop finished and the cursor went to the next line of the end loop keywords of the inner loop. Then since the for loop has not finished yet, the cursor went to the next line of the for in loop keywords. So it printed that my outer value is 2 now. Then the inner value is assigned to 1 and then entered to inner loop again. Now let's scroll the script downwards. Good. We can see that our inner loop iterated until the value reached to 8. This time our first exit command worked because the multiplication of inner and outer variables 
reach to 60 then it finished the other loop even if it has not iterated five times if this would not match it would iterate exactly five times because this is a for loop and we selected five but with this way we canceled the next iterations and sent the cursor to the next line of the end loop of the other loop fine I tried to explain the nested loops in details. You can use any loops nestedly. If we talk about the labels, labels are really very helpful things. We saw two different usages of labels. We have some more uses too, like go to and continuous statements. We will see them in next lessons. So this is enough for the nested loops and this is the end of nested loops lesson. See you in the next lessons.